Tuesday night. Welcome aboard. Between the Rolls is back with Socium, the Socium Project. Uh, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. This is our uh, take on how to build a continent uh, from the ground up. We'll be doing this all year long except for December. Uh, and then we're going to get some adventures in there. Maybe you guys want to join us. Uh, speaking of joining us, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy cool crap like nothing that any of us are wearing or anything, phone case, uh, duvet cover, pillowcase, beach towel, you know, almost beach season. We're all working on our beach bodies. Uh, the link is uh, down below. Uh, also, if you're in the market for some dice, uh, some custom dice, go on over to Twitter at Pirate Dog Dice. Check them out. See if they have time to build Jenny. I know they're building some for David right now. And if your game stinks unlike ours, go on over to oddfishgames.com. Check out their adventure scents. Over 60 different scents for your Absolutely. nasal passages. Except for Kyle, who's burned his out when he got uh, putrid sewers, which was absolutely hilarious because he nearly died. Don't inhale. Don't inhale. Uh, folks, this is the Socium Project. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the other three DMs who are uh, spitballing on this project. We have a total of eight of us, but uh, tonight, uh, first off, we'll deal with Carol. Carol, you're up first. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, everyone. As you said, my name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter. And uh, let's see, what do I normally do on here? Uh, I play on the Craig campaign um, and occasionally I show up here nowadays because I've been super busy and definitely happy to be part of this project. Nicely put, nicely said. Get the chapstick, you ass kisser. Spencer, you're hey. up next. <laughs> What? Awesome. <laughs> Hi, I'm Spencer. Um, I've been a dungeon master for about 20 years now playing since I was just a wee lad. Um, I'm here for the first time with the Socium group. Um, this will be my second time on the stream uh, talking about some some strange hobgoblins we're doing. Yeah. Interesting. Hobgoblins, you say? Oh, yeah. Mm. Last but certainly not least, John. John, same question, different answers. Hey, <clears throat> my name is John Bowen, and... Uh... I've been a gamer since the Blue Blocks Home Edition, or Blue Cover Homes Edition, and uh, I guess I DM mostly 5e, although I've meddled with other stuff sometimes, and I'm, especially in the, like, not currently, like, in the past, I've been done a lot of different systems. Um, yeah, I don't really have any special, like, I'm not doing anything for money or anything like that in role-playing gaming, but... I have been on the show a few times. Um, not, I think it's the first between the roles, but I've been on the I've been on the specials a few times, the one shots. So when you say blue box homes edition, that makes you one of those gra gra crusty old fuckers, right? Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm crusty. I know. I, don't I mean, I didn't that. paint this white. You know? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't go back. To, I go back as far as second ed. Uh, I'm right in between you two. I didn't get the blue box. I got the nice, pretty purple thing. Uh, I'm the whippersnapper my husband, here. My husband has the the red box. I started playing. I, with the, uh, I started playing when the movie came out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was so great, right? Oh yeah! Wow. Uh, the at fact the that game... you would admit that. <laughs> at least, at least I had the, the poster games... hanging up on the ceiling in my room. Nice. I'm just awesome. glad the game is so much better than that. <laughs> that's movie. the one with Jeremy Irons in it. It is. Oh okay, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I think at that time that I wasn't... had a poster of Heather Thomas on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, hey, uh, go that ahead. my God. No, I was gonna say, <laughs> hey, at least now there is like a decent Dungeons and Dragons inspired show out there. So I've seen it. It's adequate at best. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. The current season's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh, It'll work. Fucking amazing. <laughs> they don't have any bitches <laughs> playing the Dungeon Master, so that was kind of a uh, down. <laughs> uh, but he's po he pops up everywhere, though. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So, Find uh, that mercy. Folks, uh, this is the Socium Project again. We've created a continent. <laughs> now we're just populating it with 
damn near everything from the ground up. Uh, some of the nations are in pretty good shape. Some are still in their fledgling condition. Tonight, we're going to talk about broad overview on the nations. Each one of us has at least two countries uh, that we're going to go ahead and discuss. We're just going to do round robin discussion. Uh, like I said, at the end of the year, we'll probably go ahead and post this uh, bastard child and uh, you can add to it, delete to it, to ignore it or play in it. So uh, we will start with Carol. Carol, uh, which nation do you want to start out talking about first? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll do the, I'll do E. I'll do the one that I don't quite have as much fleshed out on. E. What? <coughs> Nasty questions. I'm not exactly sure of every point you want me to hit, but. Well, what's the uh, nation's name? Have you decided on that one? I have. I have made. That's actually the big thing I've decided on are all the place names and like the, the various uh, important vil well cities, I guess you could say. Sure. Uh, it's called Triskillian and it's an elven kingdom. The kingdom of Traskillian. I will send you all this, by the way, sure. after this. Yes. Yes, I've been you will. Sitting, I'll I've break been, your arms. I've been sort of sitting <laughs> on it, you know. Uh, to, this is the review. So what kind of elves are they? Uh, actually, do we have any specific... Is there any limits in this, this is, world this, at this all? This is your nation? I don't... I, you know, aside from your Nazi dwarves, I'm fine with everything. Uh, there are no Nazi dwarves, so... Uh, and we'll get that into in the history of uh, of the other kingdom I worked with. Uh, no, they're going to be mostly. I would say wood elves. I mean, since there's a lot of woods here, so it's a, it would be a nation of wood elves. <coughs> I don't know. Let me, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to actually put put down these notes. If these are things I thought about, but I probably should actually put them on down, write them down so I don't forget them. Young DMs, in, uh, putting pen to paper is still very important. Right, especially so. in the middle of the night when you come up with those brilliant ideas. Okay, so what else do you want to know? In well, the question? Uh, I, I don't know. What kind of political structure is it? I mean, they're elves, so none of us really care about them. Well, it is a, <laughs> king, it is a kingdom, so that would imply there is a king and queen. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you want, the capital is called... Oh God, who would try to pronounce it? Because you know, elven names. Uh, Marithium. Argus. It's what? No, Marithium is the capital. And it's actually on that big lake. Okay. Whereas, oh, you have D, D, you don't even have E on the, the screen, actually. It's right here. It's it's off the top of the page for me. Oh, I, I see D, I, I don't see E. I'm looking at it over here, which is what we're streaming, and it looks okay. Here, let me go ahead and move it for you. How's that? Is that better? I move it. Uh, nope. That's okay. It's it's basically it's just in the north side of that big lake. Okay. That's really strange. Uh, let's see. What else do you want to know? So yeah, so it's right. There's a king and queen, or a royal family. Okay. Yeah, early, late stages. Long-term dynasty, short-term dynasty. What the king, uh, the king, the royal family, mm -hmm. or yeah, but elves are being very long-lived, uh, a very long-lived race. It is a long-lived <coughs> dynasty. Okay. So um, no they've been around forever. No, okay. no, they the elves get along with themselves. Yeah, that rhymes. It's so. The, I mean, you can think about an elf lives lives for a thousand years. You know. So now, originally, I think we discussed everything to the east, which Carol won't be able to see, but it's forested mountains. Uh, was kind of humanoid infested shitholes as it was to. Oh the no west. no no! No, nah, the whole thing is going to be no. I'm doing away with that. The whole thing's going to be elven. Okay. In fact, it used to be a bit bigger, but there was that there's that cataclysm that we'll get into when we get in more into the lore thing and. You know, elves also, they they don't reproduce like rabbits, you know, that's one of the things. So there actually isn't a lot of them there. It's a fairly, uh, it's populated, but not very populated. It, I only have about four, <clears throat> one city and I guess three towns. So. That's not bad, especially for that kind of area. Uh, what do they do? What are they known for? Do they do merchant trade <laughs> or trade amongst themselves? 
they they kind of they keep to themselves. They really do keep to uh, I mean, they might do a little trading with their neighbors to the south, but they're, they're suspicious of anything that's not them. Like elves are. So you mentioned it, uh, the cataclysm. I assume you're talking about the creation of this water source here. Yeah. And I'm going with it. It was a vault. It was like a super volcano that blew up. So massive earthquakes, stuff like that. I actually, Light I shifts. actually, I actually, because uh, I believe it was mentioned, you know, it'd be really cool to have ruins under the ocean, like, you know, the lost city of Atlantis or whatever. <laughs> so cool. I called it, I basically, basically stole the name Pompeii. It's Pompeium is underneath. But that's nothing to do with this kingdom. But it, but basically, I said, yeah, super volcano blew up and left a crater there, destroyed destroyed all the civilization that was in that area and that included uh, part of the elven kingdom so but it, pompeium wasn't elven no no po all right so here uh, let's see so the ruins are down here the kingdom is up here so gotcha. so it's in the lighter blue area yeah okay <coughs> that's cool uh spencer john got anything for him um, um, go for it, John. I say I was going to ask. Um, it's, it's predominantly elf. Um, yeah, are there any major cities that do the trading? They like, they they kind of keep to themselves. As I said, they made they even obviously uh, everybody looks upon the kingdom, the other kingdom, with suspicion. And I'll get to that when we get to that. Okay. Um, but to their due south. But no, they basically, they live, I was going to write, they live simply. They live very simply, you know. Um, so they don't need, they don't have a lot of needs. They live off the land. Yeah, you know, I and guess you could say they're kind of like Amish. How long have they been that nation? Like a is it thousands of years? Fucking time, yeah. Okay. Thousands of years. All right. Do, do the elves care about those ruins in the water? Or are they like, are they protective of them or are they in sale themselves? You say they're like simply. So do they, are they interested in the history there or do they try to keep other people away from it? Well, considering you said it is, it's down here and they're right down. here. So gotcha. they don't really, it's not really there. They don't really care. They're kind of they like, like the forests. They like the forests and not really care much about the water. Got it. Got it. They like hugging their trees. They like hugging their trees. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with hugging trees, man. <laughs> Freaking hippies. So uh, you they you, kind of are. You had mentioned the lake, so I'm assuming that uh, merchant traffic is waterborne, or do they do it along pathways and roads? Not so much pat. Well, there'd be pathways, obviously. I mean, that they do need to travel among cities, but yeah, I mean. Uh, I said this is because I said I can't see. So there's the lake. So yeah, I mean there could be boats that go across here, but in reality, there's also this border tree. Was it tree shade run, which is on the other side, and they can they actually will come over and they can trade there if they want. Nice. A lot of times they don't want. I mean, I said that this kingdom is sketchy. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nazi dwarves, I think. No, it's not Nazi. You'll oh, wait I'm pretty till sure you get somebody to the mentioned history. that. I'm pretty sure the I Nazi, it was you. No, it was you. And, well, I mean, the Nazi dwarves are what were there before. Okay. So they all got kicked out. Oh, nice. Mm. Little tragedy going on, Macbeth. Uh, Spencer. Oh, no tragedy. <laughs> Spencer, which one are we going to talk about with you? Uh, let's start with R. Um, so we'll start with the more fleshed out one first for me. Um, so region R is kind of this really mountainous region that's got these plains of wasteland that goes further down into a kind of a bit of a semi-fertile field. Um, and I'm calling it the region Kaizan. Um, and it is a hobgoblin junta. Uh, so it is an entire region controlled by goblins, hobgoblins, and bugbears in a strict military order. Um, so everyone is involved either in the military hierarchy or is involved in this kind of shamanistic hierarchy. 
um, and they're kind of two competing factions that control the entire region. Um, let me see if I can pull up my can X out. There we go. Uh, so yeah, so the the Kaizen political structure. We got the Council of Generals, um, which is the Hobgoblin Hob Junta um, that took over after this Hobgoblin slave rebellion that created the king, the region of Kaizen. Um, and there are sort of five generals sit on this council, um, each one commanding a different section of political and, and social structure. Uh, so there's the high general, who's the commander of the standing army. Um, there's the high admiral, who's the commander of the navy, the spy master who controls covert operations inside and outside of Kaizen, uh, the high quartermaster who commands the collector of taxes and controls the major bridge of Kaizen. And then the high foreman, uh, who is the commander of internal affairs, builder of roads, tunnels, and organizer of food production. And so that whole structure exists to kind of keep the people of Kaizen, the hobgoblins and goblins, primarily um, ordered and doing things for the betterment of all hobgoblin kind. Are we talking uh, political intrigue kind of campaigns coming up? Oh, yeah, there's definitely political intrigue because the whole other section of it is like each commander, right? They have their own section. So if you know anything about military military here in, in America, sections of the army, they don't really talk so great. So the quartermaster might be the one in charge of food production, but the spy master, he might need his own things. There's some tension going on between the two. Uh, and at the same time, there's a whole second section, which I'm calling the seer's eye. Uh, these are the religious kind of sh shamanistic order of Kaizen that kind of is the, the more spiritual side of the hobgoblins and goblins and, and bugbears. Um, they primarily just control one major temple, but they have people across the entire region um, who kind of command on a more spiritual side, deciding where did the ancestors determine kind of working with the military, but also kind of against the military. Um it's a little, it's a little contentious about who's really in charge and in which areas. So you've got the hobgoblin junta or junta. Yep. Uh, junta. Are they like in the hill region or are they more in the plains region? So they are. Bears? They are entirely across the whole thing, and it's and it's a it's a collection of all the goblinoids are working together. So I think at the moment I said the spy master is a goblin, the master, the high admiral is a bugbear. Um, and the high quartermaster is also a bugbear, whereas the high general is a, is a hobgoblin. Um, so they're all kind of working together. Um, mostly the, the goblins live in the mountains and under the mountains. Um, the, mostly the hobgoblins are in primarily the hills and the plains, and the bugbears are actually the naval crew. Uh, so, go ahead, John. Oh, hey, I was going to ask a question about the admiral. Yeah. So oh, yeah. you, they must have a navy. They do. So uh, yeah, tell us about that. There's a uh, so there's two sections uh, on there in Kaizen where there's water. So there's the first section off to the west, and that connects to kind of isolated isle, the Gray Isle, um, and that area is loosely protected, primarily just trying to keep people from going there. But what's more protected is the Wavern Straits, um, the Wavern Pass that goes along. That's heavily protected, and then. To the southeast, um, on the other side of Mount Kaizen, that giant volcano that's right there, the biggest port is right there, and that's where most of the hobgoblin, um, most of the goblinoid navy is located. And one of the things that is going to be a, a source of contention between my two regions is there's a section of hills that goes into grassland, and the quartermasters are attempting to build a canal that is going to try to connect Wavern Pass to the ocean to facilitate faster trade. Yeah, so right there, I'm gonna, I'm, they're, gonna they're building a canal. Right. I ask because I'm the nation above there in P. Ah. Uh, I have, yeah, it's, it's pretty important. So I'll get to that when I get to my thing. Yeah, so, economic, yeah, go for it. Uh, so digging this canal, do you see any repercussions in cracking off a piece of the continent? Oh, the continent may not crack, but there's certainly going to be plenty of repercussions. There's going to be a lot of issues that uh, that, that come about because of this. Um, they don't know what's down there. Uh, they don't know what they're messing with. Um, and they don't understand the kind of the spirits of the land. 
In fact, most of the of the generals, they don't even know what's really in the mountain, um, which is a whole nother bag of worms that the seers are keeping hidden from them, that the mountain is much more than it seems. Hmm. I'm, I'm sensing a lot of intrigue there. Carol, uh, you got any questions for him on this one? No, I think it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty fleshed out. I don't know. I'm not good at coming up with questions. Now, now Spencer, <laughs> I, I can't remember, was it you or Jeff I like it, though. who decided to build your empire on slavery? That that's is Jeff. Jeff. Okay. That was Jeff. So Jeff and, and that's, that's Somebody be, had to do that, right? Yeah. That, that's going to be a level of contention because because Kaizen is built from the backs of former slaves and so they are anti-slavery. Mm. They are they are very very against it, and uh, that that's that's one of the reasons most of that navy is right there where it is. <laughs> and maybe, maybe my pirate, you know, maybe my pirate uh, country is more trustworthy than they are. <laughs> <laughs> and my in that section, there's a volcano there, and then right above that, there's what looks like Badlands or something. Yes. Yep. Was that the result of any kind of major event? So uh, this was a discussion before um, the island that's further to the northwest was once a fertile kingdom and was completely devastated by a massive volcanic event. Um, and then after that volcanic event, this volcano erupted um, and caused that kind of devastation wasteland. Every once in a while, it continues to spew out vol volcanic ash and, and lava and magma. It actually is one of the reasons why there's they have to constantly rebuild all the bridges in Kaizen. All the tunnels have to be redug. Um, it's a very dangerous place to live. Um, doesn't matter. Also, to help doesn't help that like the mountains are covered in monsters. Each mountain has its own monster, either giant rocks, chimeras, giants, what have you, um, dragons, even living in and amongst these mountains that are considered sacred places. So they can't step on them. They have to go under them. But it makes it very dangerous to live. Do the shaman have the shamans declared that they're sacred? Yep, the shamans declared that they're sacred, and they have they have blessed the mountains and the mountain protectors. <laughs> mountain protectors. The monsters. Various, various monsters. You have dragons up there. We got dragons. We got chimeras. We got whatever you need living on the mountainsides. Hmm, I like cool. that. Is cool. That's useful. Yeah, I uh, well, you know, if you're going to be off Wyvern Pass, you might as well have something big. Now, I, exactly, I, I'm assuming you have like herd animals or something. Mostly goats because they can live on steep mountains. You know, if you want to import some goatars, I I know where you can find them. <laughs> Maybe you should find some goatars. <laughs> they might be tasty. They might be, although I. <laughs> a little uh, gamey, I think. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little stringy. Uh, John, you got uh, two. Which ones would? Which one would you like to start off with first? Well, let's go ahead and since we're right there, go up to the P one there. There you go. Yeah. So this nation I've decided to call Jubilor. Uh, this uh, it's got a population that's pretty sparse. Like there's not massive amounts of people here. About fifty thousand across that whole area. Um, a twenty-five percent of the population are lizard folk, forty-five percent are elves, and then the rest are a mix of all the other races that might just be kind of in and out of there. Uh, because it's got so much coast, there's a lot of different settlements all on the coast, and some of them are different species and whatnot. Um, there's a big city called Mirthwall that is in that river next to that mountain right by the green uh you know that i don't know if that's a river or a channel or whatever it is not that river the oh, down the big here. yeah the channel no no the channel yeah that thing wyvern pass wyvern pass right okay so the mountain the the one mountain that's in there just to the west of that and like right at that gap right kind of in between the green and the brown color there there's a there's a um, town called Mirthwall it's a fairly big city it's and it's a it's sort of like an independent city state um, 21,000 or so people live there of a lots of different races it's a very cosmopolitan metroplex 
type place. Um, and it is democratic in that particular city. Um, it's, it's got a limited democracy, however, because in Jubilor, if you have not served the military for at least 10 years, you don't have the right to vote. So it's, ba it's basically a democratic based on a military, um, I guess, uh, superiority that, that people in the military and within the people that protect the nation are the ones that get to say what it gets to do. So Israel. I, <laughs> it's, it's mainly that way because of all around this nation, there's a lot of hostile other countries, especially Jeff's. And so they're, they're that way. So they have to be pretty, and they have a lot of land to cover and not that many people. So, you know, they do have a, a pretty importance on the military. Um, they have exports are all, since it's mostly Elvin, uh, well, I mean, 30%. So there's a lot of elves and a lot of them are wood elves. Uh, possibly they, they came down here from Carol's nation because this nation's fairly young. It's only been around probably for about 500 years or whenever the, whenever that channel got created. So however long that ago was, that's about roughly, you know, several hundred years after that, or if it's been really recent, then it would be, you know, less time, but without knowing the timeline yet, I haven't really decided exactly how old it is, but it's not meant to be very old. Yeah. We um, were discussing the channel. It was probably a couple hundred years old. So, yeah. So this nation might be, yeah, maybe 200 years old ish, you know, um, the, they're, they export a lot of finely crafted goods because they, you know, the elf, elven craftsmen are excellent at building that kind of stuff. They also export jungle wood, bamboo, fish. They have a lot of fishing around. Um, they ever import a lot of leather, iron, uh, and raw materials for crafting. That's about all I really have on Jubilor. I don't. I mean, you can. I, I'll answer questions, but I don't have a whole lot of more information. Hi, uh, real quick. You said Mirthwall had twenty-one thousand people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, does that is that stand alone, or is that part of the fifty thousand in Jubilor alone? That probably is standalone because it's sort of almost like a city state. It's not really the main part of the nation itself. There is a city called Jubal or something like that that's hidden somewhere in the forest. Not many people know where it is. It's 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 all elves. Well, I would say it's all elves, but it's mostly elves. Nice. Uh, so, so Spencer, you're up. Yeah, I got a question. Um, so so did the elves who live in Jubal do they get along with the lizard folk or are the are those two? That was my question. I yeah, yeah, because that's I love that combination living in one they, region. I but like, imagine they do. <laughs> the reason they do, all right. So when the elves, um, I guess, really don't know exactly how that swamp was formed, but the elves and the lizard folk have been trading there forever since the nation was created. And uh, but at very at the very first, probably the first twenty years or so, there was war. Uh, but one of the lizard folk. Um, had I guess became king or queen or whatever and was um, somehow I guess had some being brought up differently than the rest of the lizard folk and maybe through the elves or somehow other some other way either way they they were very peaceful so ever since then they've been peace with the elves and um, but they pretty much stick to the swamps so the lizard folk and the elves don't really share the same space for the most part. And since it's so unpopulated, there's a lot of space for them to be in. Right. Exactly. Cool. Is that a desert square in the middle of all the greenery? I thought that's hills. Hills. It's a hills. Yeah, oh, it's okay. hills. It's yeah. a good desert. All right. Never mind. Uh, real quick, <laughs> uh, do the elves have any naval uh, forces, or are they just? barricading the land well i'm gonna say they have fishing boats so they probably have to have something to protect a few of them uh probably more along the northern coast um That's and depending on how aggressive the nation that the our nation is they'd have to have something to protect the boats going through that channel because that's how the city gets in and out you know that's oh. their 
that's how they trade you know they they that's a big port city I'm so oh that, those <laughs> those two those two mountains those two mountains are the are, is like the most important trade link right now for kaizen and so that would make sense that they would be be on good fairly good terms um because that's the that's the bridge uh that connects over the pass and it's the only bridge that i know of that goes over the pass in its entirety oh. So you have a bridge that goes over there. I got you. Yep. <laughs> and it's you're, when you were saying where that city was, I was like, "Perfect, let's go." <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, let me throw. I like the thought of a fishing fleet too. By the way. Yes. I, I, actually, you know what? I will. I will say that the elves. It makes sense for the elves to have a fishing fleet, even up in my neck of the woods. Okay. So yeah, you. Uh, let's see. Oh, screwed that up. Uh. This is kind of the work in progress. Yeah, Wyvern Pass, there's a bridge that connects both of those solitary mountains. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it's guarded by the Kaizen and either the elves or the lizard folk. But it would have to be the elves, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you've got that. Uh, the good news is, and I'll just go ahead and throw mine out, is you border the Shar Curry. Uh, the Shar Curry is halflings little bastardos uh yeah. and, and these guys are made up of i think six city states so think uh florence milan only filled with freaking halflings uh all over the place uh they have two uh lay or two rivers that border them the quarter river and the lazy divide uh they have wanderlust but as you can tell it stretches from coast to coast. Uh, so they've got a lot of things going on. Uh, they've got the small cities. Uh, the Sharkuri sit at Kletic on Lake Union. Uh, Wayfair, which has its own issues. Uh, Martell, which leads into uh, the Kingdom of Lingus, which is standard Sleeping Beauty kind of fantasy realm. Uh, Eusta is their mining uh, contingent. And they have two ports, or no, I'm sorry, they have one port. This is an Etrine port. Uh, this port, Bertucci, uh, is pretty much where the moolah comes from. Uh, they also have Carletti, which is also mining. Uh, I, I went ahead and wrote in that they have the Beltorian ruins right here, uh, and you you might be able to add some into your area. This is a lost culture that, for whatever reason just freaking died out uh I, i'm guessing since you aren't very populated and i'm not very populated i'm gonna go with plague <laughs> so maybe could be uh and then uh the dreams ignis uh volcano that's dormant uh, for now uh, also borders it but the halflings a lot of open spaces uh like your area john not a whole lot of population these guys operate as city states on their own they can call to arms uh to assist right now their biggest problem is down near wayfair uh where the atrine are at the atrine are water buffalo minotaur uh they were not always water buffalo or minotaur there is a horrible, horrible secret uh, down here in the ruins. The Atrine were made, not bred. Uh, mm. So they have their own problem. Uh, <clears throat> for the most part, the halflings are free to trade, happy to trade, uh, and they only do their wanderlust uh, out of the two ports, Kletic and uh, Bertucci, uh, and they come around the world to go ahead and bring back neat things but in between a lot of monsters uh not a lot of major monsters uh clearly uh, there might be some dragons but uh probably only in the mountains i considered doing uh the weirder ones like a steel dragon or a yellow but i haven't decided uh the wayfair region each one's ruled by uh I forget what the name was that I gave him, uh, like a magistrate or a dome uh, that controls it. Or uh, what was it? Uh, Doge uh, from Murder of the Doge. So uh, some kind of 
regional leader that controls everything. Uh, and one of the pieces of lore that I have in here was the Atreen want to expand uh, and halflings being halflings, this forest uh, has been manufactured by them. Uh, they go out, they do the planting, they make sure that everything is tight confines so the larger Etrine have a great deal of difficulty. And during one military incursion, uh, the forces of Wayfair just stood back, watched the Etrine struggle through the forest, and then took the shot and killed the general. Uh, since then, uh, Wayfair has actually branched out and uh, sent out an olive branch to the city of Rotterdam. And Wayfair uh, kind of actively trades with the Etrine, uh, but the other Etrine ports, which are famous for their sailors, uh, as minotaurs often are, uh, do not know, so they do not approve. I, I won't get into the Etrine uh, battle settlement, but uh, right now Wayfair has a small trade agreement with Rotterdam. And of course, with the Lake Union right here, uh, I think there's six countries, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are six countries that have access to this freshwater uh, passage. Uh, so there, there's a lot of independent trade here. Um, but Kletic, I'm sure John uh, might be able to host uh, some of your folks. Uh, it is a port mm -hmm. city, all of this lighter stuff is just shallow water. So Rotterdam is a shallow port. I need to ask uh, John or Jeff what this one is, because I know he told me, but I didn't get it written down. But uh, that is Shar Curry, uh, home to the halflings, and they will be typical halflings or kender. They will be a giant pain in the ass, but they will also be very uh, artistic in their nature. Uh, because I want to go full-on ding-dong renaissance, puffy pants, puffy shirts, and collars on the halflings. I want them to be like Dutch masters, for God's sake, uh, stuck in the renaissance. So that that was my vision for Char Curry, because, you know, you got to have halflings, for God's sake. Um, so that is the... Uh, I'll, I will now take questions. I'm sorry. Uh, it's pretty well-developed. Yeah. Uh, I said I'm not gonna coming up with questions. I'm, I'm not half assing it here. <laughs> so, no. No. So Shark Curry, that's primarily just between those two rivers, right? Between that quarter river and then that river to the east. So then okay. Correct. I'm just trying to figure out for the map we're looking at. And, and for the viewers, any river on here is not a creek. It is a big river. Missouri, Mississippi, things of that nature. Uh the quarter river is named because it is a quarter mile across and it actually extends to both coasts. Uh, and if you missed last uh, episode for Socium, uh, I explained about the hinterland in Asmana uh, and the refugees from Aquinas crossing over. Uh, so the Quarter River is, is a mighty obstacle with only a few bridges. Uh, and one of the best bridges is right here at Martell. And then with Umea, which is Lingus, um, they, they are close in proximity, so they are close in trading. But they are a friendly nation. Uh, but there is also going to be some political intrigue. Uh, if you've seen Murder of the Doge, one of my top three, kind of like that. Uh, next question. Huh. I don't know. Uh, I said, you're, so you, these halflings, they like to get out and explore, though, you said, right? Yes, they are mischievous. So but they like no never mind. I haven't got to my friggin' land. I wonder, if, other... I, I wonder if my pirates would have an any trade agreements with them. Could be. John? Are there any other settlements other than halflings in, within that? No now yeah. uh, other races are tolerated. Uh some are well accepted. They don't mind humans. Uh they like to torture dwarves in the two <laughs> mining colonies of Eusta and Carletti, uh, and then of course uh, Osmana is all forest gnomes. Uh, so you get a few stragglers there. Uh, the humans are their neighbors right here in Lingus, uh, and 
some crossover. It, it, it is ripe for trade, uh, ripe for adventure. The military does patrol the roads, uh, but it's like a police force on the interstate highway. Things are going to get past them. Uh, and so I've left in a lot of areas for, oh, well, this is a clan of bugbears that crash landed or something of that nature. There won't be many big creatures uh, except for a few surprising giants uh, in the northwest there near the Beltorian ruins. Uh, but the Atreen uh, is their biggest problem. Uh, and they've learned after several attempts, crossing through that <laughs> doctored forest is just a no-go. So they're going to have to use their naval skills, maybe land here, because between Kledic and Wayfair, not much. I mean, there's going to be a few small villages, uh, but there's th these are the biggest towns, and there are no capitals. So, you know, and being halflings, uh, I don't think I put any walls up <laughs> because they are... Uh, now, I did do something with the port cities. Uh, do... But, go ahead. Do each of the cities, are they... Do they rival each other in terms of trade? So, like, do they spend a lot of time dealing with, like, trying to one-up each other? You're talking about in terms of art, right? You want them to be creative. Are they always spending too much of their money building public works projects? And so, like, they don't have the defenses because they've spent too much money making art instead we have too many medicis and not not enough uh i was gonna say that was my question what do you export uh we export a variety of goods uh gemstones in the northwest lumber in the southeast crops okay. along the quarter river now mm -hmm. Kledic and bertucci have been built with a wide seawall where the port comes in so they have a series of locks, even on the shallow waters, where if you're coming into these two places, you got to get through the locks, and they're heavily guarded. So if there's any shenanigans, uh, welcome to Oil City, sweetheart. They're going to burn you down. So I think I actually did uh, ring Bertucci and Kledic, uh, but like Eusta, no. There's no got way it. to feasibly Wait. guard it. Isn't that Ben Tucci? It is. I just mispronounced it. Yeah, it, I was gonna say, do they are they famous for pizza there or something? I don't know. Are you gonna visit? <laughs> maybe, maybe it, she has. In, in the cacophony game, uh, they just met. Uh, uh, who was it? Earl Hoagie, creator of the sandwich. So you know, but then they time traveled. So now they don't know if that shit's real or not. So, but uh, that is, that is Shark Curry in a nutshell. Any other questions? Back to Carol. Uh, back to me. All right. So to the fun, fun place. Let's go up to D. Yep. But let's see if it'll work this time because now I'm seeing it the way you're seeing it. Okay. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so, anyways, I decided to name this this country Sea Haven. That was not its original name. <laughs> I said, I will have fun when I come to the history portion of this. <coughs> it is, uh, let's see. Yep. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm still a little under the weather. Um, so basically it is a pirate. It is part pirate country and part in the, but where you get in the mountains, that is uh, dwarven a dwarven homeland. Um, Nazi dwarves. No, they're not Nazi dwarves. Uh, they they are actually they are actually excellent. Like, oh, well, I'm going with the stereotypes here. The dwarves are very good at you know uh, working uh, metals and and stones and things like that. So they have an agreement. They say, say the pirate portion doesn't really rule over them. The pirate, it's almost like two nations in one. But uh, but they both have each other's backs, if need be. Um, and they have a, you know, it's free trade between them. No fees or anything like that. Uh, let's see. So Sea Haven said, Sea Haven is ruled by a pirate council, which is, you have to have certain 
there are certain requirements that have to be met before you can become a member of the council. Uh, you basically have to be a captain in good standing and be nominated and the people have to approve you. It's sort of a, it's sort of a democracy really. And then there's a council of 12 and then from actually it's a council of 12 with a pirate king or queen that's elected by the council. So the 13 members and they vote one as the leader. So that way they break the ties. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to see if I add any other. Are the dwarves here. on the council? No, the dwarves. The dwarves kind of rule themselves. Gotcha. Um, they don't, you know, said it's 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 almost like two countries, really. But the dwarves are they're in the mountains, so they're rather remote. Um, I put a city right down. Uh, just north of the volcano at the base on the river and it's called Port Fire Shadow and it's on it's on the coast too and that's basically the trade point between the dwarves and the uh and the pirates uh oh as for like what what sort of races all races any races um I don't think unless there are evil races but I don't think that's really a thing anymore um pirates are always egalitarian yeah exactly so it's basically anybody who wants to come there i mean this could be sort of like the 10 towns where anything that's uh anything that's running from something they'll, they'll make their way up there um and this and i have several i have several types of poor fire shadow i mentioned that's the fire shadow because it's actually literally like in the shadow of uh sky blaze mountain I did make sure I kept those two mountains, the two mountains, Sky Blaze Mountain, and the, the eastern one is Inferno Peak. The dwarves live slightly further west, uh, a little, uh, whoop, 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 no, back up, down a little bit right there, uh, called Earth Home. That's like the capital. And then they have a little stronghold right on the border with sea called Sentinel Keep. The river, well, you know, my pirate captain who who ran who had the fleet that took over this place <clears throat> she had to name something after herself so uh the river is the blackthorn river the capital which is a bit further north uh right before you get to like the one of those like hills and trees there and right on the coast is port freedom because it's all about port. It's all about freedom with her. And I basically put a crossroads in the middle of it called Rummer, Rum Runner's Refuge. And I mentioned Tree Shade Run. And, and I think I have one more town on there that's towards the west. Um, and I actually added an island in the middle of the, the well, right off the, the thing in the bay. So kind of a little bit further north than where your arrow is, somewhere around there called Cutthroat Key. You know, I said, I will send this to you so you'll actually see. And that's basically that's a little defensive island, you know, so that ships come in, they have it manned and people can, you know, so ships can be inspected and such. I know it's kind of weird for pirates, but. Got to protect yourself. But you man. do got to protect themselves because there are people that would probably love to, you know, get rid of. There, there are definite forces out there that I'm sure would love to, you know, come down and squash a bunch of pirates. Nazi they are dwarves. pirates. Well, the Nazi, they're no dwarves. No, the Nazis weren't dwarves. Oh, okay. And they're gone. So the pirates dealt with the Nazis. I and see. I think Who do they pirate on? What do they pirate on? A any ships they can find outside of here. They'll go, they'll go sailing out the port. Um, and by the way, I'm sticking with the whole folly. Someone said folly shelf for that that area uh, right out there. Yep. In fact, yeah, you can see it there. It's folly shelf. But if you come in, it's uh, Lost Coast Cove because, well, the coast was lost. Right here. In a huge. Yeah. Like, like yeah, the cove is like, I know you can't see when we're doing here. The cove is is basically the whole, the whole bay where... Um, Port Fire Shadow and Port Freedom are on. Nice. And Cutthroat Key is on. Yeah, I have I actually have a lot of fun with developing like places like this. So cool. Any questions for Carol? 
Um, so the the elves are are they entirely in that whole forested area? So they go all the way down to that that forested area? Uh, nope. The elves are in the kingdom, which is okay. I know you don't have the lines in there. And actually, I redrew it slightly where I have the borderline going to the south of the lake instead of around the lake. Got it. Okay. Because my, my question there was, what's what else is in that that area? So you got the these these communities of pirates and sailors <laughs> that are on the coastline. What else is kind of further up? Is it is it is it more of a um, well, it's wilderness more, area? Yeah, there, it's more wilderness and. I mean, th- they haven't been around that long, I and mean, it's it's more populous than the Elven area for sure. But it still hasn't been around that long, and there's still areas to explore. However, that just screams, yeah, that screws me danger, right? That's like this area is not charted. There's there's something else on this right. map. Area. However, on the uh, the deciduous tree area that leads into that kingdom, which is the, the not there for just the, the north side of D due north mm-hmm. that whole area that that there is there's that's where tree shade run is it's up in that area mm, okay so parts of but the eastern part really hasn't been well obviously actually part of it must be because they're using that lake mm-hmm. but this is still i probably should stick a town right on the uh the other side of the lake it's, it's a little port yeah, what do a, do a mining colony no the mining colonies in the mountains <laughs> well these are mountains <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, the, the the mining colonies are in the the other mountains. The uh, what I call it, the Apexian mountain range. mountain range. Yeah, that's um, where the that's where the the mining co- and it's it's the dwarves that run them. Cool. Because you don't see pirates mining, do you? No. Yet you nah, see pirate not. slaves mine. Pirates? No, slavery is not allowed. There's that no slavery. That is a big. <laughs> Basically, basically, I, I looked at it, what kind of a community would Captain Rose of Blackthorn develop? What would you do? Just and so this Jeff is what and I are be. the only assholes. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there are. Okay. Yeah, Laura. <laughs> no, it's all about, no, it's, I'm gonna it's, have one it's when you get to me. freedom and democracy at this place, and she hates slaves and slavers, so, uh, you know, well. she's not going to look not going to look too kindly at, at the, whatever kingdom you have that's built on slaves and gifs. Wow. <laughs> uh, John has to bail at the top of the hour, so let's uh, oh. change gears. Let's go to John. I assume you want to discuss uh, humany? Humanity? Yeah. What do you call it? Think, uh, humany. Humany. And uh, so emphasis on the hue. Uh, so this, I'm going to move this so I can actually see my notes. Uh, not that y'all see what I'm moving. Ah, my mouse won't work. Yeah, your nation's big. That is. That it's is a big. pretty big. Yeah, uh, it's pretty big. So, uh, this nation is fairly young. Um, probably, again, maybe two hundred to three hundred years old. Um, it's almost exclusively controlled by humans. Uh, there are other races that live in the in the nation, but they're they're second class at best. Um, the there's there's a holy church of Saint Ig, led by Pope Zachary the the fourth, and uh, it is the church the church controls everything. Saint Ig <laughs> is a deity of law and purity. Um, the the church promotes like all kinds of you know laws about what you can do what you can wear where you can go who you can go with it's very very strictly religious um and they enforce it with the sword so do they do they determine how long your hair can be i don't know that that's that's probably not a thing no, I don't, I don't think they would care about hair. Just hair color. <laughs> uh, they don't care about your hair color as long as it's a human hair. There you go. Um, Zealots. Zealot nation of humany. <laughs> they believe that humankind is superior to all other sentient species and that the lesser species should not be allowed to own property or to participate in governance. Or a lesser species? Not anything, anything else. Anything non-human. <laughs> wow. Non-humans oh, should. 
So they are basically, oh, so they're the Nazis. They're the Nazis. They're the Nazis. They're the, they're Nazis. the Nazis. All the right. Nazi I know, Nazis. I know who Captain Rose is going to be looking at next. Actually, that's if you even, I got to figure out my timeline. Actually, <laughs> Captain Rose may be dead. It may be, have to be a, a descendant. Her, yeah, one of the descendants. Uh, the non-humans should only be allowed to learn that the human, like in the church, they only allow non-humans to learn basic low levels of craftsmanship. Wow. They control how much they can learn in the education system. They're not t- higher levels of education. Essentially, they're intentionally kept ignorant so that they don't revolt uh, because a lot of them are enslaved or at least at best uh, indentured servants. Oh, um, you're gonna, you're gonna there, fuck over my people out of your ratu, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. Okay, so there's a lot of other sentient species that live in human, uh, and those are either part. They're either part of the underground, which is the society of outlaws and black markets, or they're servants, slaves, are bound in some way to the service of human owners. Uh, there are a lot of humans though that do not like the church and do not like the slavery and so they try to keep yeah they're they're kind of trying to keep the underground going um they there are also some places because it's a huge area right so there are certain cities and towns that are under the control of non-humans and the reason the church hasn't done anything about it yet is because either they don't think there's anything they're valuable enough to bother with uh so they're really not they don't they don't matter enough to care to go send an army, right? There's no reason to mess with it. Um, wow. not, there's, uh, let's see what else I wrote. Let's see. Is that, it, is that division, is, is that divided? Like, you've got that big river there, so is, like, the North Rebels, or or does that not matter? It's the, the further away from the main uh, city, which I forgot the name of. So, I yeah, had, uh, con- con- control from the capital starts to degrade once you yeah. get a couple of days out. So when you get further away, yeah, it, it would be like, you know, if you're more than 150 miles or 200 miles away from the city, you're gonna have, you know, unless there's some resource there that's really important, they need to keep a garrison there. So uh, my, <clears throat> my question. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say they were in the art of not spreading their resources too thin. Uh, yeah, because you know they have a lot of enemies since they're jerks. Jeez. I was gonna say that's my other question: is 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 are they are they preoccupied with fighting heresy, or are they looking at expanding their own borders? Uh, they're actually fairly um, expansive. In fact, they are currently at peace, but have been at war with Jeff's nation. That's all the the Tars. And they've run a lot of the centaurs out of their land because a lot of the centaurs were in that plains area. Uh-huh. And they, they also set up logging camps up in that foresty area. So, yeah, they're, they're ticking off the, I don't remember what he called his nation, but that Great all the nation of tar. Tar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they definitely made enemies there. And the, uh, they also, and the, there's a, there's a large, like underground or whatever under dark and so literally there's a large amount of tunnels networks dungeons and caverns where the dro and the durgar also try to con- help out to kind of help help live you know any of the other species so in this case basically the humans are the bad guys and the dro are the good guys love so, it love it <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to scream and pout and yell and raise my fist. That's bullshit. That's not canon. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? So um, I get it. I, I get it then, Matt. This is what happened. This is So your place was fiddled by Aslanti from Starfinder. It could be. Because <laughs> that's what they basically are. They're, they're humans that hate everything else. And everything else is inferior to them. So... <clears throat> nice. I, so there's a there's a mill. We do call them Nazis. So yeah, they basically are. The uh, there's something called the Holy Cleanse of Ig, which a militant branch of the Holy Order of Saint Ig, that are made up of paladins and warrior priests of Ig, and they do run around like killing non-humans, smiting, 
<laughs> Swag. Exactly. I keep thinking it's I- Ig. I mean, how can you take that name seriously? Ig. Well, it's spelled Y G G, and oh, okay. you can probably guess where that comes from. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a reference to uh, Gygax. Yeah. Just when you thought humany was bad, he throws in the religious, uber religious <laughs> zealot paladins. Nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> Any other <laughs> questions for John? Okay. How do they? Okay. How do? How do they? Does anybody trade with them? Or are uh, they all self sufficient because no one will want to deal with them? Uratu does, for now. I'm, I'm sure there will be some trade, but yeah, it's they're fairly self-sufficient. They have a lot of resources. It's like a bread basket. Cool. Uh, nine o'clock. So, Je- John, whenever you need to bail, go ahead. Spencer, which one are we doing? So, I think now we're on Region T, which on the arrows will be labeled the Golden Sea. It's uh, right next to our. Yeah, there you go. Right along Lake Union, uh, and along most of Wyvern Pass. Uh, so the Golden Sea, you know, it's almost entirely grassland and plains. Um, this area is a very large area full of roving animals, of large pack animals, which in my case are going to be moa, uh, which are basically bigger than ostriches. Um, moa were once native animals that lived in New Zealand. Uh, they're flightless birds. Um, so that is the the main animal uh, and herd in the Golden Sea are these massive flightless birds. Um, But it's not actually the most interesting thing about the Golden Sea. Uh, That is the semi-magical flora slash fauna that we call the rolling reef. Um, So the water from the Wyvern Pass, and then you see that that little water that comes in the uh, from the south, um, is semi-magical and that these collections of rocks and reefs and sea life will periodically pop out of the water with surrounding globes and spheres of water and roll across the grasslands. Most of the time, the grassland is golden in color, dry, and kind of easily catches fire. But when the water of these reefs comes across, they spring with life, bringing massive blouts of color, flowers of all types, and all of the animals and creatures that can follow the water, follow the water. So the entirety of life here, because there are no rivers, is based around following these rolling w- spheres of water with reefs on the inside. You know, John, wow. people are going to come down and kill you just for sport, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's so that's that's what's going on. Uh, the people who live there uh, are primarily humans um, and other humanoids who have come in the area. Uh, they live in groving tribes um, that just follow the reefs. That's what they do. They follow on their pack moas um, going through the reefs. There are pearl divers uh, that jump into the spheres and then looking for pearls on land. Um, there are all sorts of herders and cultivators who keep track of all the animals as well. Um, the main settlements, there's only one large settlement, and that is that that city you can see right there on Lake Union. Um, it is a city of entirely refugees. Um, so anybody can come to there and live. Um, so people who have ran away from the slavers to the south um, and people who are trying to escape, I guess, those, those bison minotaurs um, or just people who survived the calamities that have taken place to the north, if they end up here, they'll survive. Um, it is an entirely merchant run city. Um, so it is completely controlled by a merchant council. And every year there is one large meeting of all of the tribes, uh, that follow these reefs there, uh, that, that was originally their meeting place. It was their gathering point. And eventually other people started showing up and well, they couldn't follow the reefs as well. So they made a city. So it's like, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, so it's like the, the the roving bands, the kind of the 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 herders that follow and go across the entirety of the grass plains. They started here; they've been living here for centuries. But as more and more people showed up and were trying to live, they needed a space to live, and so they made a city. And the 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 warriors, the herdsmen, they didn't care. They're like, whatever. If you take the city, we only come there once a year. Now we know exactly where we need to go. And then they started trading with each other, and it became a mutually beneficial agreement. Nice. Uh, cool. Questions? 
what kind of um I, I don't remember if it's uh, military protection so you could protect yourself from John's country from humany there. Absolutely nothing. Uh, <laughs> the humanies are ways away. The, uh, the, the way true. that these the way that these people have survived for centuries is running away. Um, the only thing that exists is I'm going to put uh, way to the south near uh, that area, the sandy area of paradise. There's going to be a, a watchtower. Uh, so there's going to be a couple watchtowers there that will light fires to warn that an impending invasion or an impending slave, like slave grabbing uh, group are coming. And so that gives, that tells all of the herdsmen to just run away. And that's what they do. They just flee. There's like, nope. We are faster on our MOAs than you will ever be. We're just going to leave. I was going to say, or are they masters of diplomacy at all and have made friends with all their neighbors? The, also not they, that either. <laughs> really? So, wow. That's it just I, runs. That's, that's how I figure I'm getting through life. Uh, pirate yeah. agents get through life is diplomacy. Okay. No, these people, they just run away. They're just like, we don't we don't got to worry about it. Our life is entirely self-sufficient for following <laughs> the reefs to and from across the Golden Sea. Um, people have, have begun to trade with them. Um, there actually are a few aquatic peoples that live in the waters of both Wyvern Pass and to the south. They also live in these reefs as they roll across the landscape. Um, but yeah, they primarily just, they don't got to worry about it. They can just flee. How much are the MOA? Because I'm thinking the Shar Curry are going to be buying as many as they can just to roam through their land. The the MOA are the heart and soul of these people. They are they are generally Gosh, not for sale. <laughs> At any price? <laughs> I don't think they care about money. Mr. Like, they don't, yeah, they don't need money. <laughs> they don't care about money. How about a painting? We've got this guy called Mike. He can, Where are they, they going to hang it? Where are they, they going to hang paintings. it? They're nomads. Where are they going to hang a painting? Off their tent. <laughs> this yeah. is what I mean. Did you do about why I asked, you know, what are your, what are your tricks? But you do have lumber, which could be useful. That could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, lumber definitely could would. Be <laughs> or, or crops. I mean, if they're nomads, you're not really growing. You don't have time to sit around and grow a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's there is some along like the Wyvern Pass there, there are some settlements and some farms that have sprung up from people that aren't these nomadic peoples. Um so that's like the little bit of contention going on is some people are attempting to settle down. Um at, but mostly yeah, the, the the nomadic peoples who live here, they don't they don't care. Now it doesn't say that they haven't been, you know, they don't have to fight sometimes, which they have had to. Um but just like the Mongols who were just riding around on horseback, these people ride around on moas. They'll pick you off one at a time. Nice. I, I'm digging that. All I can see is Final Fantasy. Oh, yeah, yeah. De <laughs> yeah definitely choke about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. About. Uh, cool. Any other questions? No. Okay. One, one final question. Uh, each of you have given us two nations. Uh, each one of you, yay or nay. Uh, Carol, for your elves, high, medium, or low magic? Uh, I haven't thought about that. Um, well, they're elves. I'll go with high magic. And your uh, pirate dwarves? Oh, well, no, well, wait, no. There's dwarves and there's pirates. The dwarves, uh, medium. I mean, I'll say that they, they know how to make magic weapons and such like that. But they're not really... I said, I'll go with the... I'll, I'll, to go with the trends and not really a bunch of wizards, but they do utilize enough magic to infuse their weapons and such. Cool. As for the pirate side, um, whatever they can steal, whatever, what it's, the, it's a variety pack. Um, they're wizards and such. Sure. They're wizards that live there. Uh, I wouldn't call them a high magic place because there are a lot of swashbucklers and, and things that aren't mages. So, but I mean, there are magic, once again, magic weapons. And, and if they have to do something uh, with the elves. Oh, I thought of something while we were sitting here. I'm thinking that Elven Kingdom has a portal to the Feywild somewhere in there. So high magic for sure. Nice. Spencer, what about your high <laughs> ones? Uh, they are going to be high magic. Because uh, they have to. They, That's great. Yeah, they have to. Or cleric. 
or uh, shamans. Shamans. Uh, they have to. They have to be able to uh, and, and arcane magic. They have to be able to channel the arcane in order to keep the place under control. Okay, fair. And the golden oh. sea clearly. Uh, they magic. they will be low magic. <laughs> what? Well, they're Moa. <laughs> the, the Moas are magical. No, but... Are you sure I can't buy one of those? <laughs> Uh, They're magically a, delicious. A, a halfling from Kletic riding a moa. I mean, come on, man. I'm going to be king shit there. Uh, okay, Lynette. Read your own version. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to be a raider. If he has no defenses, I'm going to be zero. Zero. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> no pirates, man. Uh, now, now the merchant, the merchants in that city, they are going to have plenty of magic. Yeah, they are. They're going to be all sorts of magical, but the. the People oh. don't see it, not at all. Are, are we are we talking like Alibaba kind of magic? Yes. Okay, oh, yes. that that works. I, I'm digging that one. Uh, John Jubilor. So that that nation has quite a bit of magic because elves. Um, they they have a lot of magic. So the elves oh, yeah. are fairly magical or high, I would say. The 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 <laughs> lizard folk also are very shamanistic. And they have clerical magic, so. There's a magic in the swampy areas too. Nice. So I'd say overall, yeah, high probably. And humany. Uh, that one is very high in clerical magic, but not very high at all in arcane magic because, you know, the arcane magic if it was allowed to spread would make it easier to overthrow their government. So, if there is any arcanists, they're probably controlled by the church, much how in. Um, what was the uh, in Dragon Age? Remember how the church controlled the arcane casters? Basically, put it, you know, it'll be similar to how that worked. Nice, uh, Shar Curry. I, I'm just going to let you in on a little secret. Those ruins uh, up here on the north. Uh, they found shit. <laughs> Gee, can't imagine. And they do not understand how it works at all. So they are going to. It's like uh, uh, who had the lump, uh, mad the lump or lump the mad his machine, kind of oh, yeah. like that. Only they have no idea what it does. So oh um, god. And you know they're buyers and sellers, importers and exporters, and you know they. Mm -hmm. They hire people, so uh, it's going to be just a shit show in Shark Curry, <laughs> especially once they get their uh, cavalry of Moa by hook or crook. <laughs> I'm gonna, hey, I want to throw an addendum in my mind. So we were talking about the dwarves. And I, I will say, actually, the dwarves are the, uh, cler clerical magic, and that's maybe fair. that's what they infuse into their weapons. They're miracle weapons. Nice. They're Nazi esque. Oh no, that's no. John. <laughs> yeah, I say I don't have the Nazis. They, I know where the Nazis are. They're John. You know, I actually, thought... they probably all. That's pro actually they probably all were driven out of my land and sent to. That's where they settled. <laughs> you know, I Maybe. thought I had a couple of dick nations, but whew, clearly I'm screwed when it comes to uh, John's <laughs> humanity because. I thought I knew what Uratu was going to do. Uh, clearly, I am a moron, and I am going to get zapped. So, uh, folks, uh, this has been Between the Rolls, the Socium Project. Uh, follow us along as every month we have two sessions uh, as we discuss different aspects of Socium meaning partnership in Latin. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it as much as we do. Uh, we, uh, Every one of us really loves doing the world building because it's just something special. So follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit or ask any questions, hit us up on our Discord channel. All that crap is down below, including where to buy our cool crap. Uh, not the women's underwear, though. That's an entirely different site. I, I don't really populate that one. Uh, don't forget, if you're in the market for some custom dice, hit up at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. And if you want to add something special to your game for the nasally people, uh, check out Adventure Sense through oddfishgames.com. They also make something called... Uh, what is that? Total, total brain lapse. 
Uh, which thing? Like the, the writing which thing? The shine, shine system? Shine project, yes. The shine system. Uh, so if you want to be a writer like me, only gooder, check out their shine system. Uh, <laughs> this Thursday we have Cacophony. Uh, yes, they did activate the time travel device and really just botched the entire line. Uh, and then Saturday, if you're interested, we have a one-shot. So it is an open one-shot. All you got to do is hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. We will get you on there. Uh, I think uh, for all of us here, we appreciate your time. Uh, and we will see you soon. Everybody give them the big kiss and wave as I get us out of here. Mwah. I can't do it. Uh, I'll do the heart. Oh, I hate the heart. Bye, everybody.